51 yes votes to end this part of the debate. Yay, 51. Nay, 49. The motion is carried. Now, uh, do we have Chad Pergram on? We do. Chad, come in, please, because we want to know what, what the format is from here on out. We've got the yes vote. We got it. We understand. Now what? Well, now the Senate is on a clock. Uh, this is called a post-cloture clock. 30 hours from now, if the minority uses all of its time, all the opponents on the nomination, you don't have to use 30 hours. But that would tee up a confirmation vote on Brett Kavanaugh if all of that time is burned, Stuart, uh, sometime just before 5 p.m. on uh, Friday, on, on Saturday, I should say. Now, there's another fly in the ointment. Uh, Republican Senator Steve Daines of Montana, he is supposed to walk his daughter down the aisle at her wedding in Montana tomorrow. But he apparently has made arrangements to be here whenever that roll call vote takes place. Now, once you start a vote, you can keep the vote open however long you want. The record is five hours and 15 minutes. On the stimulus package in February of 2009, Democratic Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown uh, his mother had passed away, and he attended her wake in Cleveland. They held the vote open for five hours and 15 minutes, <laughs> longest vote in Senate history. But right now, the question is, do the Democrats want to burn all of that time? I should also point out something else here. Uh, last year, on the confirmation vote of Neil Gorsuch, a few days before this, uh, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, altered the Senate precedent. It used to take 60, 6 zero votes to end debate on a Supreme Court nomination. He did not change the rules, but he established a new precedent and lowered it to a simple majority. Well, he couldn't get uh, Gorsuch through had he not done that last year. And as we've seen in just the past couple of moments, uh, he has now put Brett Kavanaugh on a pathway toward confirmation with just 51 votes. Had it been the old precedent, 60 votes, this nomination would be dead in the water. Okay, Chad, you know what you're talking about, and that's the intricate details of what comes next. Chad Perkram, thank you very much indeed. I, there's, a, there's a couple of items which should bring to your attention. Joe Manchin, Democrat, West Virginia, said yes. All other Democrats said no. All Republicans said yes, except for Lisa Murkowski, Republican Alaska. She said no. Final tally, 51 to 49. What have I missed here? Uh, look, uh, it's interesting, the timing of Joe Manchin's vote. When, when everyone had moved through, he came in at the end and said aye. And he becomes effectively then the key vote that moves them to their simple majority. Uh, and uh, look, I think that's what we're going to look like uh, tomorrow as well. Boy, You're going to have this kind of a close vote. A great point. And also, there was an audible gasp in the room when Manchin was voted there? yes, okay. because okay. he's from a state that Trump won by 43 points. Yep. And the president has been out there uh, campaigning for his uh, Republican opponent, State Attorney General Patrick Morrissey.